Hello everyone, this is Isabel. I'm at Submarine Networks World 2024 in Singapore. And today I'm joined by the one and only Bevan Slittery. He's the CEO of Subco and Soda. Bevan, welcome to my hot seat yet again. Thank you, good to be here again. Nice to see you at this amazing conference. That's great. It, it, it's already it's already absolutely buzzing right now. I couldn't be more happy to be here. And uh, I don't know how many years it's been for me. I think since 2006 I've been coming and it just keeps getting better. So Bevan, you've been speaking on the keynote stage this morning. Tell us what you talked about. Okay, so you know I wear a few hats. So Subco and Soda, this is not the submarine cable side, it's the Soda side. And that's our family office. And the thing I presented about today was a, a really exciting project we're doing. Uh, over the next uh, eight years, which is to build uh, a million square meters of tolerant reef. Okay. So what's the vision behind it? Why did you start that project? Look, I, I grew up on the Great Barrier Reef as a kid. Uh, we did a lot of diving, uh, snorkeling. We used to get, um, with permits, we used to get corals. We had saltwater tanks at home. It's something I've always been in love with and passionate about. Over the last decade, I've seen a degradation of the habitats that, that things are there. And I'm getting pretty concerned, you know, and I'm. I'm I'm a bit of a realist here, but also I have an opportunity to make a big difference. So I think looking forward, the decision I made is uh, some of the habitats won't recover. So we actually need to build new ones. So the vision to build a million square meters is to set a really bold audacious challenge to build entirely new reefs. Uh, the reason I picked a million square meters is you can't cheat your way. So you can't just go build a little reef there and say I've won. We're building a million square metres because to do that, we have to rethink engineering, we have to rethink biology, we have to think logistics. So, so that's the real drive about what we're doing. And if we create that cookie cutter, it's no different to a data centre. Data centre is just cookie cutters. Just If you want a data centre 10 times bigger, you need 10 of them. So in my goal is I want to create that cookie cutter for the reef, and then we can share that with everyone. Okay. So you mentioned technology. What type of technology innovation are you using to make this a reality? There's, there's a lot. Uh, so all the different kind of phases and streams, it's it's very high in tech. We're already starting to use, uh, you know, the AI in terms of looking at doing the the, the, um, the image recognition element of the same reefs that we've shot over 15 years and seeing what's changed, but also looking at what are the reefs that have prospered and why have they prospered? Why have they continued to thrive? Whether it's ecosystem or location or whatever it might be. So, so that's one example. Another example is robotics. So I hired a, a roboticist who, uh, for, who uh, is leading the whole project. He worked on uh, Cotspot, which is Cranathorn's starfish robot. So basically it's a fully autonomous drone that goes around and finds these Cranathorn starfish, injects them with a lethal poison and they die and then it keeps going. So I'm not saying we're doing that, but, but we're actually gonna need to do replication. The coral grow, it's we need to do. We need to grow 2 million corals in about four years. So to do that, you need to have, um, again, image recognition, but fully roboticized, fully automated. There's that. On the engineering side, when you're building new reefs, you're talking about new structural engineering, you're talking about uh, materials are incredibly important. Uh, and then logistics, you know, again, robotics, and, and how do we actually do industrial design and, and logistics to get corals onto reefs, but also make sure the ecosystem goes as well. So there's there's a lot of tech, a lot of innovation. We, we have to create a bunch of it, but you know, it's just all part of the challenge. Okay, this is so exciting. So this is a big dream. Where are you at with your dream? What's the status? So we really kicked it off uh, about two years ago. So the team's already set up. Uh, so we're, we, we're literally about to start uh, building our first lab uh, in our office. So I've got, a, I've got a couple levels in our building. So I'm actually going to gut one level of it. And, and the, uh, the work that we're doing on coral growth technology is going to start there. Uh, so that's the first part, uh, but as well as that, it's going to be some of the structural work. We've got 3D printers, we've got uh, a lot of work that we're kind of figuring out on that side. Then um, we're probably going to not do it in Australia, unfortunately, initially. We're probably going to do it in Pacific Island, but we're going to do some of the work on, especially on how to get corals transferred into structures uh, in a highly repeatable, automated fashion. Um, and then lastly, structures that are replicable, but can also form part of something much bigger but also not look industrial in nature. You know, the, the idea it needs to blend in and look beautiful and natural, but not look industrial. We don't want the, the equivalent of a, of a, you know, of, of a wind farm sitting in the reef, not that. You know, this has to look beautiful and natural. Uh, and so that's, that's that, so there's so many streams that have to go concurrently because we gave ourselves an eight year timeline to, to build the first million square meters. So yeah, there's actually a lot going on. <laughs> 
a, such an inspiring project. Thank you so much for doing these amazing things, uh, Bevan. No, thank and you. Thank you for a great interview as always. Oh, great. Now, thanks very much. And uh, good to be here at Sovereign Network Swirls. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for watching and until my next hot shot.